2018 and the 138th St. Paul Winter Carnival kicks off today. It's a 12 day event that features a number of fun activities throughout the city. Kelsey Christensen is live at Rice Park this morning with a preview ahead of the opening tonight. Hi Kelsey. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we're having some fun out here. Uh, lots happening the next two weeks, especially for opening day. There's going to be a laser show. They're going to be sculpting some ice, a lot of fun stuff. And the best part is it's actually warm this year, so we can enjoy what's going on. So we have a fan favorite going on behind us, and we have Lori with the bouncing team mm -hmm. to tell us kind of what this is all about. You guys have been with the carnival since it started, yeah, but you have yeah. tryouts happening this year. Yeah, we have tryouts February 2nd, mm -hmm. and uh, you need to be 21 to be able to try out. Okay. And we need bouncing girls and pullers for so even if you've never tried it or don't have a background in gymnastics, come and check it out. Okay, and that will be February 2nd at the Landmark Center, yep. and that's what's happening behind us. So here's the deal, guys. I am going to do my own tryout. I've been so nervous about this all week, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Oh, boy, that is high. All right. I'm not going to do as good as yeah, you. Thank you right. so much. Okay, my heart is pounding, guys. Let's see. All right. <laughs> And what do I do? Just cross my feet here? Okay. Put your hands behind you on the blanket. Okay. okay. There you go. Ready. Begin. One, two, up she goes! And that was high, thing. Okay. So if you want to try that yourself, you can do that February 2nd at the Landmark Center. Uh, not as bad as I thought, but uh, wow. That you nailed high. that, Kelsey. <laughs> you did you nail did it. Fantastic job. You might have a little future oh, in, in being a bouncing her. girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. We'll see, though. I'll see how I did. I'll check back in. All right. I'll come back. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, Kelsey. Uh, she wins by our book. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Very impressive. Kept her composure. Yeah. Many looking to get outside and enjoy their favorite winter activities. Today, the remaining ice rinks in Minneapolis are opening up. We're joined now by Kelsey Christensen, who's live at Linden Hills Park in southwest Minneapolis, one of the public ice rinks opening for the season, and I wonder if she's still skating right now. I am still skating and I am very cold. Winter has certainly arrived and quickly. It's pretty amazing to see uh, these rinks here out in Minneapolis because we just saw a lot of crews flooding these rinks just yesterday, some a few days ago, and now they're already turning into ice as rinks. There are 45 to be exact across uh, Minneapolis for their public parks. That's across 22 uh, different parks here in Minneapolis, 45 rinks. The first Minneapolis rink opened Wednesday. That was at Lindale Farmstead Park with the rest following suit today. That's according to the city, uh, making way for broom ball and pond hockey leagues to finally start up. And Brett, it's not only skating, the warming houses will be open as well. Uh, something you're definitely going to need if you come out here skating, especially today. The park and rec board also says the lights will be on uh, out at the rink so you can skate into the night. Now, the warming houses, uh, those hours will vary, but they will be open until at least 9 o'clock in Minneapolis. If you're thinking, hey, I want to try skating, but I don't have skates, you can actually borrow some of the skates in the warming house, bring it out to the rink, try it out. They're also looking for donations. So if you have extra skates, just drop them off at one of the warming houses. You make right. it look too easy, Kelsey. Uh, that's very impressive. <laughs> It is Minnesota, I guess, after all. Yes, you fit right in with it. Oh, I love it. Well, state of good. hockey. They're gonna, yes, yeah, state of hockey, and uh, those are going to be some uh, very busy rinks throughout the weekend. Kelsey, thank you so much. Twelve teams from across the world are in Stillwater right now to compete in the World Snow Sculpting Championship. Kelsey Christensen joining us live in Stillwater with a look at all the excitement that is underway. Kelsey, those artists, they have been working all through the night just to get started on some of these beautiful creations. Yeah, and they brought the snow to Minnesota. But yeah, it has been pretty cool to watch. We've been here since about 6 o'clock this morning. So all these teams are taking these huge blocks of snow and ice and really turning it into a masterpiece. And they do have a few days to do so. So these are going to look a lot different by Saturday. So this is Team Wales. We've kind of been tracking what you guys have been doing. This is Oliver. He is the team captain coming all the way from Wales to Stillwater, Minnesota yes. to compete in this world championship. I mean, how are you feeling yes. today coming to Minnesota? Oh, to do this? Yeah, yeah. It's all yes. coming together. And so what is this going to be exactly? I'm, I'm catching it's some two ears here. Hairs. So jackrabbits, you know when they fight? Okay. Or, or hares, we call them in 
In Wales. We call them rabbits here, but yes. Yeah, yeah, just, okay, fair yeah. enough. And, you we're, know, we've been talking all morning where it's kind of such a niche thing. I mean, how yeah. does one even get involved in snow sculpting? How well, do you even know what you're doing? We're all sculptors. We're all sculptors anyway. Uh, Joe here up on the ears mm -hmm. there, he works for Exeter Cathedral in Britain. Uh -huh. I work freelance. I've worked on Windsor Castle, Hampton Court, wow. all over the southern, southern Britain, uh -huh. Salisbury Cathedral, a lot of ecclesiastical work, uh -huh. all replacing historical restoration and preserving the old history of Britain. And now you're taking those skills to yeah. the snow. Yeah, so I got involved um, with an old Welsh team mm -hmm. who invited me to join them. Uh, they'd been doing it for a long time, since the 90s, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I joined them for a few years. They taught me everything. And when they retired, I carried it on. Mm -hmm. And I decided to use uh, my, my friends, you know, give them the opportunity to come out here with me. So I've involved about 20 people okay. over the past 12 years. So, so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oliver, thank you so much. We will let you get back to work because yeah, we have a lot of work ahead here, uh, my friend. <laughs> Jack Rabbit. Yeah. The boxing bunnies. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as I was mentioning, they have until Saturday at 2 p.m. to finish their masterpieces. Then the judges will, of course, pick the winner. But the festivities go through Sunday, there is uh, dancing, there's an indoor tent because we know that people need to stay warm. So a lot going on out here. And Paul, about 50,000 people came last year. So they're expecting another huge event here in downtown Stillwater. Oh, it is going to be great. Kelsey, thank you so much. New this midday, demand for electric cars has really been growing lately. But here in Minnesota, there is also an increasing interest in electric power sports. Wild Mountain out in Taylor's Falls has some of the first electric snowmobiles on the market. Our Kelsey Christensen got to test them out. Hey, so this is a Taiga. This is made in Canada. It is an electric snowmobile. Yes, it's made in Canada, but one of their top markets is actually right here in Minnesota. Yes, because we typically have a lot of snow, especially this time of year. But the company tells me that it actually is drawing in a lot of people who haven't owned a snowmobile before because it's just so easy to use. Let me just show you here. If we come on over here, just kind of like an electric vehicle, you basically just hit start to turn it on and then you can just go. Notice how quiet it is. You can also just hit reverse and it reverses too. I took an actual pretty long ride. Check it out. Okay, so here's the demo. It was pretty fun, I gotta say. Uh, this thing goes up to 60 miles between charges. It goes about 60 miles per hour and the battery lasts two hours between charges according to the company. And those batteries are made to work in the cold. Of course, that's a necessity with something like this. It is named Taiga, as I said. It's actually named after a cold subarctic forest. And this is the first winter that they're up for sale. And Minnesota-based Polaris is gearing up to go electric too. That company has said it's aiming to start producing electric snowmobiles possibly by next year. So we could really see this uh, start to blow up here across the country or even the world for folks that are into electric sports. But this year it is Taiga. Wild Mountain bought two of them to help get around the grounds to make snow, which they've had to make a, a lot of this year. We want to be good stewards to our environment, and uh, and and you know, environment is it's like uh, winter is our uh, playground, and uh, we want to make sure that we uh, we keep it. You know, as we're kind of in this uh, this warming spell and up and down, we want to just be be able to continue having skiing and having fun. Which is basically Wild Mountain's motto. They are a carbon neutral resort. Now, as for the electric vehicles, a standard model will cost you about $17,000 and the company says it should last for about 2,000 battery cycles. All right. See ya. Man, listen to how quiet it is.